Hey, what's up everyone? Eric Rossi here, and by the title of this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Canon EOS M6, but I really just wanted to tell you like five of the main reasons I bought it and what really has stuck out to me. I've owned this guy now for probably three to four months, and there was a specific reason why I went with something like this compared to some of the other stuff on the market. As you know, I've tried a lot, and this just hits a lot of check marks for me for what I need. Eric, all you do is talk about Canon now. Well, yes, I do primarily shoot Canon now, uh, and Fuji, obviously, but I talk about everything. I've been invested in Nikon for years, and I've only recently made a pivot, so I'm not just here to shove Canon stuff down your throat, but why this stuff is practical, at least for someone like me, and it might help you out, out there as well, so no. It's just a tool. The number one reason I bought something like this Canon M6 is that I wanted something portable, something a little bit easier. I like the 6D Mark II for what it does. Full frame, flip screen, uh, flip screen. And I just wanted something a little bit easier, especially to just document things for myself, to go out and vlog a little bit, just to capture things. And this has it right here. This fits in the palm of your hand. This kit lens is a 15 to 45. Uh, it, it's okay, but it really holds a lot what I want in something like this so this just basically just throws right in the bag and you don't have to worry about it it's super compact and you get amazing image quality and resolution out of this guy right here the other thing that i wanted and i'm going to kind of combine some things on this one is that i wanted something that had dual pixel autofocusing i really rely and i really love having that as a tool in what i use that's why i kind of moved to canon for some video stuff so that way i can do this youtube stuff and this has this right here with just a a really nice little APS-C sensor, and you really kind of get everything that you need. And with that as well, you get focus peaking, which is a big deal for a lot of people. I like to do it so that way I can see details on B-roll that I'm shooting, but it's just nice that you can have focus peaking and something like this, really making it exciting for what Canon can do with mirrorless cameras going forward. And also that it just has one of the, their newer Digic 7 imaging processor, which makes, which makes autofocusing in both stills and video very fast, snappy, and accurate. The other big thing for me was something like this size having a mic input, and this does. Now, there is a minor annoyance, I'll talk about that in a second, but your mic input is right on the side right here. I found a solution that a lot of people are having. I have a little mic thing with an adapter that you stick onto the side and this is your mic setup right here. You can vlog on the go, you can do some things and it just makes it easier. But even you could put it up in the cold shoe up here. I would show you my what my Rode mic would look like, but that's currently on the Canon, uh, of what I'm filming with right now. But there is that minor annoyance where if you do have a bigger mic and you do have the screen up, it basically blocks the entire screen. So people were figuring out ways to rig around it and glue things and do things to the camera. So that way you can use this little port on the side right here. I have a video talking about the solution about what this is and how it sounds down in the description below. So if you wanna check that out to see a solution, go check that out. But this has a mic input that's huge and that's one of the big flaws of the Sony RX100 uh, Mark V doesn't have one. Another easy one, it's the flip up screen. You can vlog, you can see yourself, you can do what you need. And that's one of the main reasons why I bought something like this. And this is the reason I went with more of the uh, M6 over the M5 is that this screen flips upwards. So that way you can see yourself. The M5 actually flips downwards, which is practical for freak nothing. That's the dumbest design thing I I've seen in a long time. But the perk goes to be you get the EVF the electronic viewfinder with the M5. With this, you obviously don't have a viewfinder. You just have the screen, but for $200, you can buy an, an optional additional piece to get that EVF if you really want, but it will take up your hot shoe. So I didn't care about an EVF. I use a lot of live view when I'm doing the stuff that I want, and this works. All that being said, another point that I wanted with something like this is great battery life, and this is actually pretty good. I can be out all day in extreme conditions being very warm or very cold. Uh, there's vlogs and everything that I have that you can see image quality that I'll link down below and pin a post or two. And this thing lasted all day compared to my friend, uh, Ted Forbes, who was using like the Sony RX100 stuff and the batteries were just getting depleted very quickly because of just how they are. Sony RX100 is a great camera, but in regards to battery life, this M6, 
uh, the M5 is much better in regards to that. And this thing doesn't overheat or anything like that. So that being said, there are a few cons to this camera as well. So there isn't always great. Um, the one thing a lot of people would want in something like this is 4K video. Personally, I still don't care about 4K. I don't need it. But people who want 4K, this isn't an option for you. Look at the 100 line. If you can see inside right here, and I move this around, you don't see image stabilization built into it. It's because one of their one of these selling points and kind of ploys that they did was saying that they have in-body stabilization. They do, but it's electronic and it's not that good. You do get a lot of jittering. I don't rely on that, especially for video. For stills, it's not that bad, but if you want it for video so you don't have to have a gimbal or some rig or something like that, don't expect a ton out of that for video. And the last thing I'd say for something like this is that it needs faster lenses. It needs better glass. And mind you, that's where Canon's gonna have an interesting time with their mirrorless line and how they're gonna get into things. There is a lot of fast glass for stuff like this. It's very light, it's very portable, but it is portable, but it is very plasticky. So it can take a little bit of a beating, but if you really drop it, it'll probably crack and not last well, but they need faster glass. So all that being said, for around $800, this guy right here is something that I think is a workhorse. And I've been beating this up and using this way more than any other camera, just because it's hitting everything that I wanted and that's the point of something like this. Listen, it's 1080p, you could do 60 frames a second. It's actually pretty good 1080p as well. The image quality is great. The low light is actually pretty impressive for what it is. In the one vlog where uh, where I was, uh, we had a little meetup and in the bar I was at 3200 ISO. Now mind you, it looks a little smooth, but it's very good. I didn't do adjusting to it or anything like that. I'll link that down below. And it held up for what it was for the size of this, the portability, and the options that you get. That is the reasons why I really like the Canon EOS M6. I've already told you why over the M5. I already have a video where I talked about the RX100 Mark V, how great that is, but that really just wasn't for me because it missed a couple things and everything like that. But this M6 is severely underrated and it's definitely worth looking at, not just because it's Canon or anything like that, because of what it could offer you for the price point. Um, the other thing goes to back with the R100 point, you're almost near $1,000. Why not just get like a Canon SL2 for around $500? That's to balance out for yourself. You want the size, what options do you want? This holds a lot of what these mid-range Canon DSLRs are doing for similar price and maybe even just a bit better.